Ever wonder how your body fights off diseases? It's a battle that rages on within us, unseen, yet critical for our survival. Welcome to the thrilling saga of our immune system, a story of relentless warriors and cunning invaders. Our body is a fortress, and like any fortress worth its stone, it has a formidable defense mechanism, our immune system. This complex network of cells, tissues, and organs is our body's personal army, ever vigilant, always ready to spring into action at the first sign of an invader. At the heart of this defense system are the most loyal soldiers of all, the white blood cells. These are the knights in shining armor, the relentless warriors that stand guard over our bodies, seeking out and destroying invaders. They are born from stem cells in our bone marrow and spend their lives patrolling our bodies, ready to spring into action at the first sign of trouble. There are different types of white blood cells, each with their unique role. Neutrophils, for instance, are the first responders. They're the fastest and most abundant, rushing to the scene of an invasion and swallowing up bacteria and fungi. Then we have the lymphocytes, the strategists of our immune system. These cells are split into two groups, B cells that produce antibodies to mark invaders for destruction, and T cells that destroy infected cells and help direct the immune response. There's also the monocyte, the big eater of the immune system. This cell transforms into a macrophage, engulfing and digesting invaders and dead or damaged cells. They're the cleanup crew, ensuring that the battlefield is cleared once the fight is over. And let's not forget the eosinophils and basophils, the specialists in dealing with parasitic infections and allergic reactions. They may be fewer in number, but their contributions are just as crucial. In this incredible microscopic battlefield every soldier plays a critical part, every action is coordinated for maximum efficiency. It's a war that's waged every second of every day, without us even realizing it. Your body's immune system is a well-oiled machine ready to defend you at a moment's notice. But what happens when unwelcome guests enter the body? Imagine our body as a fortress, and within its walls a serene and harmonious kingdom thrives. But there's a twist. This peaceful kingdom is always under the threat of invasion from unwelcome guests known as pathogens. These are microorganisms. Tiny, yes, but capable of causing diseases. These invaders come in different forms, each with their unique battle strategies. First, we have bacteria, tiny single-celled organisms. They're everywhere, in the air, the soil, water, and even on and within us. While many are harmless, some are not. These malicious bacteria invade our bodies, multiply rapidly, and release toxins that damage our cells. Next, we have viruses, even smaller than bacteria. Think of them as hijackers. They can't reproduce on their own, so they invade our cells and use them as factories to multiply. This process often damages or destroys the invaded cells, causing illness. Then there are fungi, a group of organisms that include molds, yeasts, and mushrooms. While most fungi are harmless, some types can cause diseases, especially in people with weakened immune systems. They typically invade our skin, nails and lungs. But how do these invaders get in? Well, they can enter our body in a variety of ways. They can hitch a ride on the food we eat, the water we drink, or the air we breathe. They can also enter through cuts and wounds or be transmitted by insects like mosquitoes. Once inside, these invaders can cause a range of diseases, from the common cold to life-threatening conditions like meningitis or pneumonia. They do this by disrupting the normal functioning of our body's cells, tissues and organs. Yet despite the constant threat of invasion, our bodies are not helpless. They have a powerful defense system ready to fight back and protect the kingdom within. But that's a story for another time. Our bodies are constantly under attack but they're not defenseless. What does your body do when it gets hurt? Let's delve into the fascinating world of our body's healing process. Imagine you've just cut your finger. The first thing that happens is inflammation. This is not just your body's way of saying, hey, something's wrong here. It's actually the start of the healing process. Blood vessels widen to allow more blood to reach the injured area. And this is what causes the redness and swelling we're all too familiar with. But why does it hurt? Well, this is your body's way of telling you to take it easy and protect the injured area while it gets to work. Now, let's talk about our unsung heroes, the platelets. These tiny blood cells are the first responders when you get a wound. They rush to the injury site and clump together, forming a plug or clot to stop the bleeding. This is an important first step, but it's just the beginning of their work. The clot also releases chemicals that attract white blood cells. These cells are the body's cleanup crew. 
They come in to destroy any bacteria or viruses that might have snuck in through the wound. At the same time, they start to remove damaged cells and debris to make way for new tissue. Meanwhile, cells called fibroblasts are busy producing collagen, a protein that forms a scaffold for new tissue to grow on. This new tissue, known as granulation tissue, is rich in blood vessels and helps to fill in the wound. Finally, the outer layer of skin starts to grow back over the granulation tissue, forming a new barrier against the outside world. This whole process can take anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks, depending on the size and severity of the wound. So, next time you get a cut or scrape, remember the incredible process going on beneath the surface. Your body is not just sitting back and letting things happen, it's actively working to repair the damage. Our bodies are not only fighters, they're healers too. What if you could grow a new limb? Sounds like science fiction, right? But in the world of biology, this is not as far-fetched as it seems. Let's take a journey into the fascinating world of regeneration. Picture a starfish. Now imagine if a predator comes along and snatches one of its arms. What happens next is nothing short of magical. The starfish, rather than being left handicapped, begins to grow a new arm. This is the power of regeneration, the ability to replace lost or damaged body parts with new, fully functional ones. But starfish aren't the only creatures with this incredible ability. Salamanders too can regrow entire limbs, tails, parts of their hearts and even sections of their eyes. This marvel of nature has had scientists scratching their heads for centuries trying to unravel the secrets of these regenerative masters. Now, before you start imagining yourself growing a new arm or leg, let's bring this back to us humans. Unfortunately, our regenerative abilities are somewhat limited in comparison. However, that's not to say they are any less impressive. Take our skin for instance. Every day, our skin cells are hard at work, replacing the old worn-out cells with fresh new ones. This is why a small cut or scrape heals over time. And it's not just our skin. Our liver, the body's detox powerhouse, also possesses remarkable regenerative abilities. In fact, it can regenerate up to 75% of its own tissue after injury. It's like our very own biological phoenix, constantly rising from the ashes of damage and disease. So while we may not have the superpower to regrow a lost limb like a starfish or a salamander, our bodies are still pretty remarkable. Each day millions of cells are regenerated, keeping us healthy, healing our wounds and fighting off disease. While we may not be able to regrow limbs, our bodies still have some pretty impressive regenerative abilities. So the next time you marvel at the magic of nature, remember to give a nod to the magic happening within you every single day. So, what have we learned? Let's take a moment to reflect on our journey today. We've dived deep into the microscopic world within us, a world that's teeming with life, a world that hosts a constant battle between health and disease. We began by exploring our immune system, the body's very own defense force. It's a complex network of cells, organs, and tissues, all collaborating to protect us from harmful invaders. These invaders, or pathogens as they're scientifically called, come in various forms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Each of them has unique ways of causing diseases, but our immune system is always ready to fight back. Now, when these pathogens do manage to breach our defenses, the body doesn't give up. It initiates the healing process, a remarkable sequence of events that works to repair the damage. We learned how platelets rush to a wound site to form a clot, how white blood cells clear away the debris, and how new cells are formed to replace the injured ones. And then, we touched upon the magic of regeneration. It's not just the starfish and the salamanders who can regrow lost body parts. We humans too have regenerative capabilities, albeit limited. Our liver can regrow after partial removal, our skin constantly renews itself, and our blood cells are replaced every few days. Our bodies are indeed fascinating complex machines, constantly working to keep us healthy and strong. The next time you catch a cold or get a cut, remember the incredible processes happening within you. But wait, we're not done yet. There's so much more to learn about our body's mechanisms. So if you've enjoyed this journey, do consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more content like this. Together, let's unravel the mysteries of the human body. Remember, knowledge is power, and each new discovery brings us one step closer to understanding the marvel that is ourselves.